all right guys welcome back this is video number five and i want to thank you for checking out the previous four videos today we're talking about something super 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 important now i know i probably said the same thing over the past four videos about it being super important but literally everything is really strategic really critical really focused in what we're doing to get to the finish line of you being launched okay and today's video is about your actual look so we've talked about the mindset going into buying the food truck what you need to be thinking about before you do that we talked about the bullet points that you need to hit when you're actually physically in the process of buying the food truck we've talked about the floor plan and how to make it efficient once you got the food truck well today we're talking about how you're going to make the food truck look that makes your brand pop that draws people to you so the first thing you need to be thinking about is your actual logo and you may have already started thinking about your logo even before you actually started to really strategically put together what your food truck was going to be about. You know, people start thinking about logos and names and what I'm going to serve. And you start thinking about that stuff maybe years in advance of what you're actually going to do. But now it's really time to nail down what that logo is going to be. So what I want to do is go over nine different types of logos that you can think about that will help you in the final decision of what your logo is going to be. Okay, so let's go over what these nine different types of logos are, the names of them, and then I'm gonna show you some examples of companies who use each one of these types of logos. And then you can talk about how they resonated with you because you're gonna pretty much recognize 100% of them. And then later on, we'll go into the colors that are used to evoke some sort of strategic emotion out of you. And then talk about what sort of emotion do you want to give the customers that are coming up to your truck to buy from you, okay? So number one is called dynamic marks. Two, mascots. Three, word marks. Four, letter forms. Five, monogram or letter marks. Six, uh, they get a couple different uh, definitions for this one, but some people call it a logo symbol. Some people call it a brand mark. Some people call it a pictorial mark. Seven, abstract. Eight, combination marks. And nine, an emblem or a badge. Okay, that may sound kind of complicated to you, but trust me, when you see some of the logos that you've seen pretty much every day or at least weekly, you'll see that it's really not that complicated. It's just layered somewhat in the approach of how that bet, how that uh, logo was done and how it's presented to you. So let's get to the first one. Let's talk about dynamic marks. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put different companies' logos on here that you've seen use these so they can make sense to you and you can get an idea of what you wanna do. So as you can see, a company like MTV is used, what's called a dynamic mark, Nickelodeon, Google. And if you look at these logos, you can see that they're you see that they're colorful, they're creative, they give off an energy that is fun. They're dynamic in that way. And that's the emotion that they want you to feel back when you look at their logo. Number two, mascots. We've all seen mascots before. Uh, if you look here at Colonel Sanders from KFC, uh, Captain Crunch from uh, the cereal, Tony the Tiger from Frosted Flakes, uh, Mr. Peanut from uh, Planters. We've all seen uh, mascots at sporting events or whatever the case may be, wherever it is. If you're going to use a mascot for your brand and your concept, you need to think really hard about what is going to be. Unless you're serving something that's just, you know, um, your everyday type of thing, like a hamburger, pizza, taco, you know, whatever it is, you could easily throw somebody in a taco suit or a a big burger suit or a pizza you know you can easily do that um, but if you have a, some any sort of complexity to your concept and you want to go with the mascot you're gonna have to think really hard about what kind of mascot could I pair with my brand you because when what you don't want to do is make a joke of your concept by having some you know crazy mascot that's taking away from your brand you want something that's going to add to your brand not turn your brand into a joke so if you're going this route and you want to get some sort of mascot and you're not serving one of the, you know, more popular hot dog pizza, burger, taco, if you're not doing something like that, 
you need to think really hard about what you're going to be, you, what that mascot is going to be so it doesn't take away from your brain, it adds to your brain. Number three, word marks. So word marks uh, basically consist of just the company's name. The only difference is, is written in whatever font that you choose that you want that name to be. So this can sound super straightforward, super simple, but what happens is a lot of times it becomes complex because a lot of people overthink it or they underthink it. Overthinking it about what font, you know, you think about it for so long, then you just end up choosing nothing or it's something crazy that you just hard to read and people can't understand it or you underthink it and the font's super blocky and it looks super generic and super super off so you know you want to be right in the middle there you want to get something classy something fun but not boring or not too um too out there so here are a handful of companies that you can look at and you can see the font that they chose and the route that they went in choosing the word mark for their logo okay so look at a couple of these companies here you have wix Wix is the website company, the hosting, you can design your own templates. They're pretty big now. They started off smaller, but they're huge now. Look at the font they use. Look at their design. It's simple. Coca-Cola. You all know what that is. Subway. I would assume that everybody knows what Subway is, depending on where you are in the world. But if you don't, it's a sandwich, uh, a quick serve sandwich company. And Kellogg's. If you don't know what Kellogg's is, it's a um, it's a food brand. They started off with a cereal, but they have like oatmeal bars and you know all kinds of stuff now. But um, as in the previous uh, example of a badge, Kellogg's owns the Tony the Tiger brand and a few other ones. But look at their designs. You know, look at the fonts, look at the color choices. They're not over complicated. They're not super dumbed down. They have they you know they pop off. I really like the Subway logo because of the design the two um, colored uh, the two color words it, it sticks out but look at what they chose look at the route that they went and think about it this might be a route that you want to go just to keep it simple but also have a classy and somewhat exciting look for your brand number four letter forms so letter forms are one letter logos that only include the first letter of the company's name so oftentimes Companies who use letter forms like this will also have an additional version of their logo that shows their full their full business name, but they also have these shorter versions that are almost like a stamp of their brand and starts with the first letter of the company's name. So let's look at a couple of them here, and they're going to be a few that I'm sure all of you recognize. Number one, McDonald's. You all recognize those golden arches. You've seen them before and you've seen them for a long time netflix netflix is not a new company it's a huge company but it just hasn't been around as long as mcdonald's but they're so big that you still recognize that that red in and beats the headphone company that is about 10 years old now or so but they're a huge company now i believe they were bought out by apple i could be wrong about that i need to look at that but i believe so but they're a huge company you can see the route that they went with their logo and how clean and nice they are. But once again, generally, letter form logos are good choices for brands that are reasonably well known. Because once you see it, you immediately know who that is. For brands that are new, it's going to be hard for people to know that that's you unless you just have a huge amount of ad spend going. So these are letter form logos. Take a look at them. Um, they're clean, they're nice. They get straight to the point, but you also know who that company is when you see that logo. So keep that keep that in mind. Number five, monogram logos. So monogram logos are typography logos that are made up of a brand's initials. So in most cases, uh, the brands that have monogram logos are referred to by the abbreviated versions of their names when you're talking about them. So here's a few to look at. Uh, that'll give you an example of what I mean by abbreviated versions of their actual full name. HBO. HBO is an abbreviation for Home Box Office. CNN. CNN stands for Cable News Network. IBM. IBM stands for International Business Machines. And NASA. NASA, NASA stands for National Aeronautics and Space Administration. I mean, just think about that. Every time you talked about NASA and you said National Aeronautics and Space Administration is going to fly to dot dot. 
I mean, just think about it. So these are abbreviated versions of their full name turned into a logo. Number six, logo symbols, brand marks, or pictorial marks, whichever way you choose to call them, this is what they are. And just for the sake of this video, I'm going to call them uh, logo symbols. That's just, you know, it makes more sense. But for the sake of, for the sake of this portion of the video, I'm just going to call them logo symbols. So logo symbols are basically graphic icons or symbols or images that reflect the brand's identity. Uh, normally, logos like this represent some sort of object from the real world. Uh, this is another one that's used by a lot of bigger brands because the thing is, once you see it, you instantly know who it is. So you don't see these sort of symbols used by smaller brands because there's the question is, what is that or who's who is that? When you see these, it's from a, a huge brand that's already saturated in the market. So here are a handful of companies that use symbols that you'll easily recognize. You have Apple and Target and Twitter and Instagram. So if you decide to go this route, one of the key things that you're going to have to think about is what's going to symbolize my brand. Uh, if you want a literal representation of what this is, just go look at Apple. I mean, their symbol is an actual Apple because their company's name is Apple. But a lot of companies aren't that clean. The, the, the symbol plus the name of the brand isn't that clean that it, as it is for Apple. So finding the perfect symbol or um, image can be fairly challenging, like I said, especially for a new brand, because odds are when you're growing, things change, your products change, and sometimes your logos change. So if you are heavily invested into this symbol, you're going to have to make sure that everything you do as you grow still fits under this or just spend the money to rebrand, which a lot of people don't like to do because it causes brand confusion. Number seven. Number seven are abstract logos. So abstract logos are, once again, image-based logos that use some sort of abstract form of reflecting a company's branding. So unlike pictorial marks that represent a real object, abstract logos are more metaphorical, if you will. So they don't depict necessarily a specific recognizable object, but abstract marks give you um, the chance to create something that's highly unique. So if you go for uh, this type of logo, um, you're going you're gonna to have to really understand what your brand's core values are, what your concept's core values are. So here are a handful of companies whose logos are considered abstract, and they're also household names as well that you'll recognize. So you got Nike, you got Pepsi, Airbnb has an abstract type of logo, and Adidas. So the... So the goal of an abstract logo is to experiment with it, but you want to evoke the right emotion and the right messaging to the consumers about your brand. Some abstract logos can go completely left and completely miss the mark, and it's hard to come back from that. So when you go abstract, there's a fine line between hit and miss. So be careful with these, but if, you're, if, you, if you hit it, it can be a really good thing. Number eight, combination marks. So combination marks are basically a combination of images and words. So it can consist of everything that we mentioned before, just a combination of the two. So, you know, a mascot with letter form, word mark with letter form. Combination marks are very popular amongst brands from pretty much all industries because they're extremely versatile. You can create a number of different variations of your logo using these different purposes for the different things. But you also have a clear and cohesive visual language throughout the whole logo. For companies that aren't well known yet, combination marks can be a great starting point because it helps with brand recognition. They see your name and then there's also something else that goes with it. One of the good things is over time, as your brand grows and becomes more recognizable, you will have the freedom to just use either the text or just the icon. Where in the beginning, you're starting with both of them. And it's just to really get you out there. So I'm going to show you a couple of um, companies that you probably will recognize here who use combination marks. And one is NBC, uh, Taco Bell, Dropbox, and CVS. NBC has an icon that they branched off with. They've branched off with just the letters and the icon. 
Um, Dropbox, I haven't seen it too much, but I'm sure that they could. And I mean, you know, of course, Toggle Bill can. But so basically, as you grow, you can stick with just you can stick with the two, or you can branch off and just use an icon in certain spots, or just a letter form in certain spots, or both in certain spots. You get to choose. I really, really like the. We're gonna get into the badges, but those are my favorite. But this will probably be my second favorite of them all. Number nine, the emblem or the badge. So as I just mentioned, badges are my personal favorite. I just like the stamp look of them all. What they do is they combine text and some sort of symbolic imagery uh, to form a design that has, for the most part, a traditional feel. I've seen some be kind of, you know, some be out there, but the majority of them have a traditional feel to them. Um, you really have to think about what industry you're in when you're using badges because sometimes they don't make sense especially when you're talking about food, but they make more sense when you're talking about possibly something else. They're popular with like sports teams, uh, universities. One thing, one critical thing that you need to think about when you're using a badge or emblem is they tend to have a lot of intricate details on the inside of the badge. And this makes it less versatile as some of the others because they don't always work well on a smaller scale. They're harder to read because they're inside of that badge. So you have to really take that in cons into consideration when or if you decide to use a badge type of logo. So some of the companies who use who use badges are the NFL, Warner Brothers, uh, the soccer team Manchester United, uh, millions and millions of people's favorite Starbucks. So these are just a few for you to look at to you probably now that you see this, if you didn't recognize what a badge logo was before, now that you see these, you will probably notice them a lot more. Like I said, they're my personal favorite, um, but they're they have some downside to them where some of the others don't as much as this may. So you got to be careful here. All right, guys, so that sums up the nine different style logos that I strategically want you guys to think about when you're finalizing your plans and you're starting to move into spending money to put into your brand. But there's two more things we need to be thinking about when it comes to the branding on your truck. So a big reason why companies choose the colors that they choose is because they want to bring out a certain emotion in you as a consumer that's attached to their brand. So I want to show you this color wheel just so you can take a look at this and really, really, really think about what you want your customer to feel like when they see your brand. It's super important. It means a lot. So, you know, really look at this and really think about how do I want my brand to be perceived emotionally? What's the energy that I want my brand to be perceived at? Because people look at these things consciously and subconsciously and make uh, decisions based on their experience that they may or may not recognize. So take a look at this, um, you know, pause this if you need to and think about what colors I'm pretty sure you, you know, you may have already decided, but maybe based on this color wheel, it might not give off what you thought it was going to give off. And you might need to tweak some things here. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but take a look at this and really strategically think about it. And lastly, number three, you're going to, after you decide your colors, your design, you know, your everything, you're going to need to figure out how do you want to wrap your vehicle? Do you want to go a partial wrap? Do you want to just have a spot wrap or do you want to do a full wrap? Of course, the full wrap is going to cost more. The partial wrap is going to cost right under that and the spot wrap is going to cost right under that. But you need to think about what's going to give off the best, what's going to give off the best brand look for what you want to look like. We're going to talk about this in another video, but the customer experience starts the moment that they look at your truck. So what do you want to show the customer as they approach you to do business with you? It's very important that you nail down everything in this video because it's going to travel with you for the longevity of your brand. Yes, you'll have opportunities to change things and to tweet things, but it's pretty expensive to get your vehicle wrapped and you don't want to make mistakes and have to go back and correct them or rewrap and redesign and do all that stuff. So that's why it's important to start thinking about this stuff now to get it down. So, so you don't have to go back later and spend a bunch of money correcting what you could have got right in the beginning. If you strategically thought about it in full. All right, guys, this is one of the longer videos because we had a lot to cover. We had a lot to go over and explain and see and understand. Um, I appreciate you sticking around to the end and going through this whole thing with me. Um, could you please 
send this to someone who you think may need it and if you haven't liked and subscribed to the channel please do we strive to give you this sort of detailed strategic content over and over and over again so we've got a lot more coming and i hope that this video helps you out a lot like i said if you haven't already subscribe to the channel like and comment on this video if you have any questions or want to bounce any ideas off of anybody just you know leave it in the comments and i'll make sure um at least, you know, we'll get back to you and hopefully some other people can bounce some ideas off you too. Once again, I thank you. Like and subscribe to the channel. Send it to somebody who you think may need the help. And I will see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.